He's stalking me. So good, so tasty. It's a lot of up and down. <laughs> I definitely get my stair workout in during the homeschool day. Um, so I thought I would share part two and you can see I filmed it all in one day I just didn't want it to be a super long video um, Long format. I wanted you to be able to watch it and just kind of uh, if you wanted some of the information chunk it out Plus I thought it was important to do a little bit of a separation between early elementary and some of my older kids So I have kids that are in what would be considered junior high or middle school I have two and then I have one high schooler this year. I had two high schoolers last year this year I only have one well actually I have two but one my oldest son actually went back to school and he is doing a completely online um, school curriculum so he does that completely independently because he's an adult so he can just do that on his own um, but he did go back to school this year so he should be graduating we think this year um, with his high school diploma as well but I don't do any teaching with him and there's a support for him if he needs like has some questions and needs some help um, but it is completely self paced and self-taught and it's it's perfect for him um, but I thought I would share part two today with some of my older kids and show how the rest of the day works. So um, if you watched part one, if you haven't, and you're interested in how our homeschool day works, part one has everything to do with my younger elementary student and how we begin our day as a large homeschooling family up until the afternoon when I'm ready to start the afternoon part of our day. So I'm actually getting ready to start our dinner. It's about 1230. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get dinner going in the crock pot. I don't always cook dinner. Sometimes my husband and my oldest son will cook dinner. My oldest son's actually gonna come out and help me cook dinner right now. Um, my adult son, he's gonna help me cook dinner and get this prepped. We're making a like a lemon garlic chicken and then we're gonna do um, a lime cilantro, a butter lime cilantro rice. So it's something we've never made before so I'm kind of excited about that. But anyway, um, and then we're going to get into the second half of how we kind of fit everything in as a large homeschooling family. And I thought it'd be just kind of fun to share that with you at the beginning part of this year, kind of show you how we work our routines and how as a writer and a homeschooling mom, I'm able to fit that stuff in um, and still get try to get everything done in a day, but there are so many days that I don't get everything done. Today seems to be running well, so I hope I don't like jinx myself on it and I can kind of show you when a day's running really well, how I get all of what I try to accomplish in a day done and how I try to reach some of those goals with the routines I've set up for myself and for my children and our whole family. So yeah, let's do this. Welcome to part two and this has been kind of fun, a little bit of change in our regular vlogging, uh, but we're still vlogging today, so you'll get to see like just stuff the family is doing throughout the day. Oh, and I forgot to have Aspen, <laughs> forgot to have him put his name and date on the paper. I like to keep dates on everything. It's really good with record keeping, so I know people have asked me like how I keep records, and a lot of it is just dating the paper that they're working on and keeping materials for one year, and then as the year uh, switches over, I will start getting rid of things from the previous year and adding to my new year. So everything I saved from last year, I'll throw away at the beginning of next school year and everything that's from this year will stay for one year, if that makes sense. So that way I have some sort of record to show that my kids have been doing school all year and I also keep like calendars of um, like days that they've done I can also keep track of easy peasy has like a digital format that I keep track of it too so lots of ways that I keep records um to show what my kids are doing so anyway I'm gonna stop getting sidetracked and quickly put this date on and then we're gonna start dinner and then I could not remember what the date was I've been writing it all day and couldn't remember it when I needed it so I'm gonna stick this in Aspen's binder and that's another way that I keep track of records and I don't want to go too much into that in this video um, I may do a video maybe next school year when I do back to school of how I keep track of records and stuff and like precise schedules, stuff like that. Um, but I just give each of my kids a binder and I keep some of their paperwork in here when it comes to their good and the beautiful stuff, that's all self-contained. So I just save those books for a year. Um, 
and because they sometimes go through multiple books in a year or multiple levels. So I'll just save anything that they've done for this year and everything else gets kept in a binder and that's it. And then I'll switch this binder out and they'll get a fresh binder and then we'll flip flop. So yeah, that's how that works. All right, let's oh, make yeah, some I was gonna show you this too. You might have seen me in part one. I keep our markers up here during the week. I actually moved these downstairs, but it's just so much easier. Um, during part one, you might have seen me get in and out of this thing. I'd like to get one in white and gray um, instead of the rainbow color, but for now, this is what I have. He's stalking me. <laughs> um, but instead of keeping them downstairs like I used to, I keep a lot of our record keeping stuff, but this is stuff I use every single day for the kids. This is like all of their books. I don't keep their binders up here because I just don't have anywhere, and they just, I don't know, I just don't think I'd like how they look up here. Um, but. I used to have to run downstairs every time I wanted something for the kids and it became kind of tedious. So I brought this up and it just works so much better. And we've got our whiteboard and our science station, science and history and all that kind of stuff station up here um, that we use. And it makes it so much easier now that this stuff is up here and I keep a few extra like pens and highlighters and all that stuff in, in my hutch drawer and that seems to work well. So. All right, let's get some dinner. So Matt came up for a quick lunch. He gets to get off early today, which is kind of nice. They don't have much going on. Wait, he's making <laughs> he's making a mess in the microwave. I just cleaned. Who's Matt? I don't know who he is. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, honey. Yeah, I called him Matt the one day, and he's like, "Why'd you call me Matt? Are you mad at me? You always call me honey." <laughs> <laughs> here you go, bud. So honey over here <laughs> is a. Uh, making lunch for any of the kids that would want what he's having. So far, Zane's the only taker at the moment, so looks like I'll probably be putting together some lunches for kids. Anyway, we're about to start. Skylar's coming out in a minute, and we're gonna make this, I don't know, what's it called? Lemon garlic butter chicken. Chicken thighs. Chicken thighs. Chicken thighs, they were supposed and to be I just got her a new recipe for some, how do you say, ganache, ganache, ganache soup. I don't think it's ganache. Gnocchi? I don't know. Gnocchi? Gnocchi? I don't know how you pronounce it. Anybody know? Gnocchi? Let us know. We need phonetic Wait, spelling what? though in the comments below. Gnocchi? So good, so tasty. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you were recording that. I was. Oh, well, you better cut that out. Just <laughs> come out to help me. Whoa, you're going to push the sandwich in the sink. Where? <laughs> no. come out to help me make some some dinner, so let's do this. We need a crack pot. I don't have one of those. So Skylar helped me get dinner done. He helped measure out some ingredients and chop up garlic. Um, and we just kind of worked together as a team to do parts of the recipe to get it done quickly. It's not even one o'clock yet, and I'm ready to start one-on-ones with Ireland. I'm gonna turn this on high. It'll cook in about three to four hours, so there is the beginning, beginning of our dinner. So I'm excited for it already smells good and it hasn't even really started cooking but just the ingredients smell good together it's not something we've had before so I'm curious to see how this recipe turns out maybe anyway, I'm gonna do a quick cleanup in the kitchen from our cooking and then uh, I think I'm gonna get started with Ireland maybe get myself a salad or something for lunch real quick um, before we get going and then We'll get our day moving forward. The nice thing is, is dinner will already be done. So even if school runs till like 5.30 tonight, won't really matter because dinner's already in the crock pot. So. We're at the older kid part of the day. So I start the afternoon part of our day with our middle schoolers and I do their one-on-ones. So it doesn't necessarily take a whole lot of time to do their one-on-ones depending on uh, what's going on, what we have scheduled for the day. Um, but we do, we start with the good and the beautiful. So I'll kind of show you how that works. A lot of it though is like a quick go over between Ireland and I. We'll go over and see what's there. And then she gets some assignments that she'll work on doing during our group session. So that's kind of how that works. So I'm gonna go get her books. The first thing I do is I get out their assignment notebook. Um, so I'll get Ireland's out and then we flip open to the date and I just start writing down what assignments I'm gonna give them. So with Ireland, I will give her handwriting and we'll just kind of go over it because now she's starting to really read cursive. Draw a mushroom. Yeah, it has art in it too. Um, 
So I'll have her read over them just to make sure that she's understanding what it says in cursive because they're still getting used to reading in cursive and now really writing in cursive, they're copying sentences. So see, this is kind of what their format looks like. And then it gives them a little doodle or like drawing <gasps> down at the bottom. Tomorrow is a cactus. <laughs> and she's actually almost done with, uh, with this one. She has, well after today she'll have about 14 lessons left and she'll be in the next level of her handwriting. So go ahead and read it to me. Honesty is the best policy. Say please and thank you. Never give up on anyone. Be kind to everyone. So I remember when they used to say, when Ireland would say to me, oh, I can't read that, it's in cursive. And now, now she's reading cursive. So I'll just write that on one of her lines in here that she's gonna have handwriting assigned. Some days I'll skip handwriting, like if I know they have a lot of um, work in their literature, or maybe they're working on a big project, we'll skip handwriting. It's not something that has to be done every day. Um, and we don't do handwriting on Fridays. Mm -hmm. um, the only reason they do handwriting on Fridays is Friday is the day that I have them sit down because our day's not as long and finish up any work that they have left from the week so that we're usually so that we're not moving into the next week with anything undone and left behind. Um, and that way they don't have any work on the weekend if possible unless they would have some sort of like special project. But not very often do we have work on the weekends. So when that's done, I just toss it to the side. She has a spot she sits in every day, so does Zane. Yeah. During group, they have their like claimed spots at the dining room table. So I just put her books in her spot. And she is also almost done with her level as well. She has about 17 lessons to go before she moves up Monkey. into a new level. Monkey. So then in her level that she's in, she's learning phonics, reading, spelling, writing, Grammar and punctuation, literature, poetry and memorization, art, geography. So um, when they get up into these levels, it starts teaching geography and I things like that. Pencil. Okay, so we're going to talk about oral narration today. And you have graduated your sight word letters, so you don't do those anymore. Um, I think next level, she's going to be doing challenging word climbs. So it'll take, Zane already does those, it'll take sentences that have like more difficult vocabulary in it and it'll it'll stretch her vocabulary some more. Since Ireland Ow, uses- you stepped on my foot. How? Where was I put my foot right here and you moved your foot back. Okay, oh, sorry. Um, since Ireland uses the good and the beautiful as well for her literature and language arts, um, I do the same thing that I do with Aspen and I just put the date up in the corner so I can keep track of records. And then for Ireland and Zane, once in a while Aspen will have it in his level, but um, he doesn't quite as much yet. I think he will in the next level that he goes into. But they have a section called independent practice and today Ireland actually has two sheets. No. So, yeah, I know. Um, One of them has a frog on it, so I'm kinda happy about that. So what I tend to do is I have these, I get these at the Dollar Tree and they're they're like can, sticky. Can we use Pinkle? Um, I'm actually on green today. Oh, why don't we Sorry. use Pink? <laughs> um, I take a wet erase marker and I'll write a number on the tab and then I just stick it on their sheet and I'll go over what she has for independent practice for her. Um, but I just stick it on the sheet by number and then Instead of having to write down everything she has, I just write down, can I have my pencil back please? Oh, yeah, yeah. I write down the number one, and then she just knows to look for tab one in her book. And then I'll write two for the next page that I wanted to do. And I try to use the same color for each day, um, or for the same day, because it just helps, um, especially for Zane, it's easy for him to see what he has going on for that day. So today's color is going to be green and then tomorrow will be yellow and so on and so forth. And then I just write whatever color we have for tab over in the corner. Pink. And that's kind of how we do it. And then I'll go over with Ireland and I just double check and make sure because before I've been known to miss pages. Um, I'll do, and I also use these to keep track of where we are in the book and um, like here we had phonics stuff that we were doing. There's sometimes there's testing pages, so then it's easy to find. It's a nice little, stop that. 
keep yeah. drawing on them. I didn't draw on them, I drew on the plastic. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> um, I don't remember what I was saying, no. Um. Um, but it's just an easy way for me to find the spots that we're at. So then I'll go over what she has. Like today she'll have homophone practice. Um, she's working on a set of words. You have two, two, two. Mm -hmm. um, poetry memorization review. Oh, we got to do that together. So we'll do that now. Little things it takes to show us God. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you've got spelling rule seven and targeted oh. spelling words. And then for page two, you have so. possessive nouns to work on. So, and common noun or proper noun. So let's go over that. Once we're done with Ireland's language arts, I'll just set that to the side too. Um, the next thing we're gonna do, they do a group um, mathematics together. We do Life of Fred together. They have their separate one-on-one um, -on -one mathematics. Okay, so we do that through Easy Peasy, so it's on, well, not all online. Um, they do have some paper, paperwork sometimes that they do, just like with Aspen's. But today, so you did extra math yesterday, right? Yeah. Oh, you're doing it again today. Do um, so I get to play Grand Racer? Yeah, you can play Grand <gasps> Racer. Yeah. Um, so she's, right now she's doing something called extra math, which takes her through um, and just like kind of quizzes her and really gets some of her facts down pat. And then she's also doing some worksheets right now. She's playing some games and um, She's working on watching some videos that will teach her some of the math skills. Really trying to get her like multiplication facts down really strong. It's also working on just getting her like addition and subtraction facts brushed up on and stronger. So she does a lot of like speed work with that kind of stuff at the moment. So I'm gonna get you started on extra math. And while she's doing this, it'll give me a minute to go ahead and get some more of my housework I wanted to get done. So. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go grab clothes that I know need to be put away so I can switch my laundry and I have free baskets to fold into. So that's kind of what I do at this point in the day when I have a free moment. As I work with the older kids, I tend to have more free time um, than I do when I'm working with Aspen because they have a lot of things that they watch. Um, like videos that they'll watch and um, readings that they listen to and that sort of thing. So I do have a little more free time when I'm working with my older one. Anyway, so I do the two older boys. I put their laundry in tier lens. It, once in a while, some of her stuff uh, gets in there. But anything that they have that comes out of the wash, I will put in a separate basket from... Um, from the younger kids because all of their rooms are on the top floor. So I put all the clothes that are hung on the top and then everything folded underneath. And there's really not much in there. Um, I do anywhere from two to three loads of laundry a day. Now in the summertime, the kids, our schedule changes a little bit more and we do a lot more life skills and stuff where they're doing more of that stuff. But during the school year when they're working so much, um, I have them help me with like one or two chores a day and then on the weekends they'll help me with some stuff but they don't do quite as many chores during the school year. Okay so I was just about to sort through a basket of dirty laundry. Usually if I am grabbing uh, and hanging clothes up upstairs I will try to grab a basket full of dirty laundry from one of the hampers and just bring it down to add to my laundry as I go. Um, but I was going to sort and Ireland just called and said she's done. I'm going to grab this recycling and T's doing her workout for the day. Um, and we're going to go up and continue on with her school day. So it's a lot of up and down. <laughs> I definitely get my stair workout in during the homeschool day. So because there's two sets of stairs in this house, so I'm always up and down. them. Okay. Are you ready? We're still continuing on with Rhea's math. Um, and we're gonna see what she has next. She did her extra math. So now she's gonna watch some videos, um, getting her multiplication facts steadier in there. And she's gonna play this game that she loves called Granny Grand Prix, but she calls it Granny Racer. And I think I talked about this the other day. Um, if you caught our video the other day where uh, she gets to race these grandmas um, to like practice her facts and get them down pat, so. Okay, let's do this.
Um, I'm gonna print up your sheet. You have a worksheet for today, so go ahead and go grab that, and then we'll go over what it is. And I think it's pretty similar to what you did the other day. So every now and then she'll have printed worksheets to do. Today she has one, she doesn't have them every day. Um, I also think on Life of Fred today they have uh, facts that they're gonna be working on and some paperwork that they have to do. So it's been quite the paperwork day. So anyway, I will write that in her assignment notebook so she doesn't forget that she has a math sheet to do. Um, and the other thing I like about this is then it reminds me as well what they have going on and what go. assignments they were supposed to get done. Thank you. Okay. It's a All right, so same thing you did yesterday. You're gonna write the answers in here. Okay. So she's playing some games. So while she's playing some math games, I am going to... Oh, that freaked me out. I thought I started the microwave without anything in it. I was like, ah! Anyway, I'm gonna go down and finish what I was doing because I'll have about five minutes or so while she's doing that to get my laundry done. Hi, T. Hey, <laughs> Mountain T was on the total gym. So anyway, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get this laundry sorted. This is really a back and forth game in, in this house. It's just back and forth between school and housework, school and housework, making meals. That's how our day runs during the homeschool year. But it works and it all comes together. I know a lot of times people say, you know, how do we get things done? How do we fit the schedule in? And so I just thought it would be a good way to kind of share how we do those things with everybody. Just kind of give you an idea of what we do to make things work. And this is, this is it. So I got, I got the laundry and the basket separated and one towel folded out of my dryer. So I've not started my second load of the day. It's not happening yet. Oh, blinded by the light. Anyway, oh, I'm sparkly. We're gonna move on. And what do we have now? I think computer class. So Brax or Zane, Ireland, and Aspen all have computer class. I think Braxton does too, but I'm not sure. I came in fourth in the Grand Eraser this time. Sorry. Um, anyway, they have computer class, but Ireland and Zane are on a different level of computer than Aspen is. Now, so a lot of times they'll do, Ireland and Zane will do their electives together, but once in a while it requires separate, so today it does because she's actually learning to do something on the computer. I kind of, uh, I did a sneak peek ahead to see if this was gonna be a group lesson today or if it was a singular lesson and it's singular. So, okay, so we're gonna look at the history on our internet browser. Their computer classes, sometimes they're typing, sometimes they're a little more extensive, sometimes they're just a short little lesson like that was just teaching them something on the computer. Sometimes they know the stuff that's on there, but I like to just go through it so that I can make sure I haven't missed anything that they might not know. I did not know that. And she didn't know how to find the history, so now we know, and now she knows, and she can do it from here on out. And so each week it's just a small computer lesson that teaches them something important. Sometimes it's internet safety. Yep. Um, sometimes it's it's all different things, it's sort of like our PE class. Our PE class is a mix of um, physical education and then health classes as well. So it'll teach them like safety that way too, like health safety, food safety, yeah. all hygiene. those kinds of things. Yep, hygiene. So they do art, um, physical education and health, computer, music, and I think that's all we have. Fridays we do uh, a language class. So they have French that they're doing. And Ireland's actually been practicing it on her phone. Yeah, I've been practicing French and Irish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's wanting to learn Irish, so. Okay, we are, we're done. So I'm gonna get together with Zane and we're gonna do his one on I also forgot one of the things that I'll put in Ireland's is whatever independent reading book she has. So she's currently reading the book, Fairest. Um, and she said it has really short chapters, but she's starting to really enjoy the book. I think it's by the writer of Ella Enchanted. Um, but that is currently what she's reading. 
So I'll write that down just so they don't forget that they have their independent reading to do later on in the evening. Um, and if you notice, I've got one getting something to eat out there. So for lunches, I used to do like, and sometimes I will, I used to do like really formal lunches. Now what we do is there's like leftover sandwiches. I don't know, we just have stuff that's readily available that the kids can just get for themselves so that we they can eat when they're hungry for lunch. And we don't have to do like a set, okay, everybody to the table. We can just keep our uh, day moving smoothly. So when they have break time, they can go eat their lunch. And we don't have to take that extra like hour out of the day to do a lunch time. Um, Aspen, I normally have to get him something. But now as he's getting a little bit older, like today we had leftover spaghetti. So he was able to just pop some spaghetti in the microwave for himself and make his own lunch. So it's teaching them to be a little bit more independent. Okay, so it is now time for, are you in there? <laughs> oh, we got a scooch. It's time for Zane's one-on-one. -on -one. So the way I do his is very similar to Ireland's, but he is of course in a different level in some things than she is. They're in the same grade, but their levels are just different. Um, I don't know if they'll continue to stay in the same grade. He may actually advance um, a grade faster, just depending on where um, Ireland is. So it all just depends on where they're at. They may or may not stay in high school together, or he may move into high school and she'll stay in middle school for one extra year, um, just depending on where we're at. Okay, so the first thing I do, of course, they're in the same level of handwriting. Um, and so I will have Zane look through and just see. Today he doesn't have to read anything to me. It's actually just working on your printing. You don't have to do cursive on this, so you're gonna copy that. Oh, really? He has the same assignment notebook. And we do Good and the Beautiful for his Thank literature you. too. Now he has two separate books that he works out of for his. Um, one is a spelling and writing book and the other one is language and literature. Uh, language arts and literature. So he studies literature, grammar and usage, punctuation, art, geography, spelling, vocabulary, writing. And then this is just the additional book for the spelling and writing. So um, each day it switches. So one day it's a spelling workshop, the next day it's a writing workshop in here and then whatever the lesson is. So I do the same thing with Zane that I do with Ireland. I use these tabs. I actually started them with Zane because he had so many extra pages to work out of, especially with the two books. Um, and then it kind of meshed over into Ireland. So we're gonna go through here, go over the lesson. Um, Zane is about halfway through his level, getting ready to go into his next level. So I'm actually gonna order his. I already have Ireland and Aspen's ordered because when I'm at the halfway point, I tend to order their next one. That way, if there is um, any sort of like hold on it, I have it ready to go and it, we're not like rushing and saying, oh no, we don't have what we need. So I do it about halfway through their level. Okay, you ready? So just like Ireland, uh, Zane does mathematics through easy peasy. So we're gonna open up his level today and find out what he has to do. Okay, so he's gonna have some online lessons that we're gonna read together today. Um, and then we're gonna finish up, hello? <laughs> we're gonna finish up, um, where are you at? I can't see you. We're gonna finish up his one-on-ones today with computer class as well. He's gonna learn the same thing Ireland did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, if you wanna know what that was all about, stay tuned for part three when I share how I do Braxton's uh, homeschooling part of the day as a high schooler and how we also get in our group lessons together. See you in the next video and can't wait to share part three with all of you. Mm -hmm.